Now, when it comes to your sense of honor, when it comes to you doing something for the sake of Allah that you feel like detracts from your reputation, that you feel like detracts from your sense of izzah, from your sense of rank, imagine how many more mouths of shayateen open. In fact, think about all the people around you who might not be shayateen in their essence, but shayateen al-ins are people that play the part of shaytan, at least in a moment. When they say, are you really going to forgive? Are you really going to make up with that person? Are you really going to text that person? Are you really going to call that person? Are you really going to let this go? If you let this go, what do you think people are going to say? If you let this go, what does that say about our family? If you let this go, this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen. Hold on to that grudge. Be petty because of this and this and this and that. Think about how many devil's mouths open when you think to humble yourself for the sake of Allah because you fear a loss of maqam, a loss of rank. See, when it comes to spending your money, pretty straightforward. Loss of ajr. Do I believe that I'm depositing and loaning for the sake of Allah in the hereafter? But when it comes to what I feel like is a loan of my reputation, a loan of my honor, a loan of my person, then it gets a little bit more complicated. Because I will hear in my head so many times that I should fight and I should argue and I should be petty and I should brawl and I should grudge and I should do this and this and this and that. And that is the way that I puff my chest out. And I walk on this earth with a sense of dignity and honor. And in truth, you're being a fool. And the Prophet says in a hadith from Abu Hurairah and look how he brings it all back together alayhi salatu was salam. He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma naqasat sadaqatun min mal. I swear by Allah, wealth is not decreased by spending in charity. And in the same hadith, وَمَا زَادَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا عِزَّةً Allah will not increase a servant of His in the ability to forgive except that He'll increase him in honor. That person that forgives frequently, al-'afu, is to particularly be forgiving and to overlook people's uh, faults, to, to be able to let things go, to be able to resolve your grudges quickly. Be quick to forgive, be quick to overlook. Allah will increase that person in izza, even if 70,000 shayateen from the jinn and 10,000 human beings tell him otherwise. Allah promises you that he will increase you in honor. And the Prophet ﷺ says in the most general way, وَمَا تَوَالَى أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ No one ever humbles himself for the sake of Allah except that Allah elevates him. Except that Allah puts you up. And subhanAllah, that fear of being less, that fear of what people will say, that fear of what that other person will think if I forgive, that fear of what that person's gonna say if I don't jump in on this and this and that, all of that goes away when you connect yourself to wanting that rank with Allah. Let them call you a coward, let Allah crown you on the day of judgment. Who cares? I have something better. How many times did people point and laugh at the Prophet ﷺ? How many times did people think that the Prophet ﷺ was diminishing himself والسلام, by not responding in kind to the types of things that were happening around him? How many times? And Allah Azza wa Jal through every single one of those things, we have elevated your mention, O Messenger of Allah. Because you never humble yourself for Allah except that Allah honors you. Even if 70,000 shayateen, sometimes when you got to write that text message or make that call or let something go, it's more than, se imagine having to pull your phone out of 70,000 shayateen's mouths. That's what it feels like at times. It feels heavy. The burden of reconciliation, the burden of husn al assuming well of what people say. The burden of letting a sly remark go. The burden of being the person to bring people together, bring your family together to end something silly online or something silly on a WhatsApp group. All of that burden. People will say things about you. But what do you want Allah to say about you? Because shaitan's making you a promise. Allah's making you another promise. And you wonder why the Prophet ﷺ always was so composed and he had such control of his temper to even when he released the valve alayhi salatu wasalam and showed anger, he did it for the benefit of those people too because it would wake them up. And he did it for something Greater than ego, alayhi salatu was salam, to wake them up when he released that valve, alayhi salatu was salam. But you know why the Prophet maintained that composure? Because he knew where praise and rank comes from. It's from Allah who sent him. It's from Allah that a person is honored and dignified. 
And so I want you to think about how you shut the shayateen's mouths the next time someone pokes at you. The next time something happens within your family, your community, whatever it may be. And shut all 70,000 mouths and a few human mouths as well without physically shutting them so that you could pursue that rank and honor with Allah. And that was what Imam Ahmed rahimahullah mentioned when he said, I forgave everybody in my life. Even the people that tortured me, I forgave them. And you know, by the way, I'm, I'm going to say this. In this day and age that we live in, it's the age of anger and rage, forgiveness and grace are not popular concepts anymore. They're really not. They're looked down upon. They're looked at as weak. And that means that the reward with them is greater. When he said, because I remember from Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah that on the day of judgment, he said commenting on the ayah فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ that people who are forgiving and people that reconcile and people that squash these things quickly, their reward is with Allah, that on the day of judgment when everyone's on their knees, Allah is going to say, where are those people who used to forgive and overlook for the sake of Allah? And they will stand when no one else stands. They want that rank. They want that rank. They want that reward. I say this, dear brothers and sisters, because shaitan can make you poor in the soul and he can make you petty with your ego as well. And I want you to actually start to visualize shutting him up. When you do your tashahud, it is heavy on him. When you give your sadaqah, it's heavy on him. When you overlook, it's heavy on him. When you get up to pray, it's heavy on him. Because you have to reduce his impact on you by showing that you're pursuing something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it can be done because we see the examples of the people that came before us and what they overcame for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah azza wa jalla make us those people upon whom the shaitan has little entrance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to overcome all of his madakhil, all of his ways to our soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that pursue his reward and his rank at all times. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us amongst those who fall for the tricks of shaitan. May Allah azza wa jalla grant us the promised firdaus, the promised higher love, highest level of paradise, should we aspire to that high reward. Allahumma ameen.